Hello there and welcome. My name is Jimmy Wikman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the Glassing Cloud changes between March 11th and March 18th. And we have a lot of things in this one, so let's jump into it and get started. So here we are now in the cloud changes in the blog from Atlassian, and let's just jump right into it and see what we have this week, and because there are a lot of things that has been published in this one. So let's move on. Let's start with the first one. So the first one is then export accounts from domains faster. So this is now then in your admin section. So when you have claimed a domain, uh, you can now faster export the users that belong to that domain through the CSV. So what they have done then is that uh, when you go then to your admin atlassian.com, sorry, I should be on the right screen, and select the organization if you have more than one, and then you will go to settings and domains, which is where you will have claimed then the domain. And then from the actions column, which would be at the on the right side of the list there of the accounts, uh, you or the uh, domains, you will now have the export account. So I didn't have it in my instance today, so I couldn't show you that one. Um, but the, it will be there, and when you try to export it, or when you click to export it, you will get the confirmation screen, and then you will get the CSV email to your account. So this is an improvement of how it used to be before, before you had to go to uh, use the claim accounts part. So this is now faster and easier for you to uh, export your, your users from this one. So this one is a very good change. Let's see, new, uh, this one is about insights, about your organization. Uh, so what you have is, if you go to your admin account, and you go to security and insights, you will have some, some information about your account there. And what they have added now then is, uh, as you can see here from the description here, if you go now to the charts uh, where you will have the security insights part, you can now refresh it manually also. Otherwise, it will automatically refresh every 24 hours. But obviously, there are situations where you want to have like current data. So now that we have added that for you in the refresh button at the bottom left. We move on to the Jira platform and um, I ranted last week about the limitations that they are placing on assets, and this one did not make me any more happy, and because now they're adding another limitation to assets. And in this time, they are now limiting the object schemas. So the, uh, the largest in parts of your assets is now limited to 100 object schemas. And Sure, you can survive with 100, depending on how you use them, uh, but I still question why is these, are these limitations implemented? It's, to me, this is increasingly alarming that they are now in placing more and more limitations on assets, and I'm questioning the scalability of assets, to be honest. Uh, so if you have more than 100 object schemas, uh, then... Um, then you will be very sad uh, because then your, your asset management will stop functioning because uh, there's a hard limit, uh, 100. And um, I'm heartbroken over this. I, I think whoever is in charge of assets at Atlassian needs to sit down and really communicate now because I'm not the only one who's questioning uh, will asset even be viable in the future now that it is obvious that it is not scalable. And uh, so... Someone needs to take a look at this one very quickly. Moving on to more pleasant news. So let's see. Uh, use Atlassian Intelligent, Intelligent to define words in the issue description. You've probably already seen this one if you have activated uh, the AI. And that is you will have this multicolored uh, underline on certain words, especially if you have it in Confluence. So what that one means that is that the AI will actually try to connect single words into uh, content that you have in Confluence. 
And from them, you can then uh, actually get kind of like a, a glossary or something like that. So when you click on it, you will like it, the AI will actually fetch the information on it uh, and present it to you. So for many things, you don't have to do anything. It will just fetch uh, the description of that word. And this can be, for example, um, project names, or it can be uh, acronyms that you are using internally that you have defined somewhere. But it is uh, based on the information found in connected Confluence spaces. So just so you are aware that anything that you have in Confluence, uh, this AI will now try to connect it to different, uh, different words and stuff like that. So we are going to take a look at this one a little bit more later in another video, I think, because uh, when I saw this one uh, demoed recently, and you actually had, you could vote and you can have people that actually could uh, confirm that this is the correct definition of that word. So, um, yeah. And what they are doing here then is, and uh, you can use this one manually also. So make sure that the description is in view mode. Uh, so you, not when you edit it. And then you can mark the text, kind of like if we were in here, then we could do this. And then you can then select define. This will then be something that pops up and you can then click define. And then you will get uh, the AI to fetch that information from within your Confluence spaces that are connected. And it will present uh, what it think is the proper definition of that word. This is really, really good. Uh, it can also be a little bit dangerous depending on what kind of words uh, it will actually fetch for. Um, because there could be something that you don't want other people to know about it. And then you need to make sure that it is being blocked. Um, because otherwise you can theoretically fetch information that uh, might be hidden uh, for different reasons. So this one we need to test out a little bit to make sure that it does not, uh, that it respects the, the uh, different limitation or the access that we actually provide. So it cannot actually and go through uh, the security precautions that we set in motion for it. But this one is really nice and it's really, really accurate also. So when I have tested it, it actually fetches the correct information every time. And uh, I think most of our teams will love this one. So next up is then the revamping of the year import wizard. So on June 30th uh, this year, it will now come out a new import wizard and that will actually um, improve the way we do imports. So uh, if you are planning to migrate to cloud and you are planning to migrate somewhere between the end of May and probably around uh, August, September or something like that, I would consider not doing that because every time a new tool like this one is released, there will be bugs. So uh, you could end up spending a lot of time uh, failing with your import or your migrations uh, because of the potential of bugs. So it's always better to wait a couple of months and let uh, everyone else find those bugs so it doesn't screw up your uh, migration. But what you will get is a new and improved way of importing. Uh, so, until you, so until this one comes out and they have these extra links uh, to the current migrations that you can use. So just be aware then on June 30th, you will have something new that will come out and it's quite possible that it will have bugs, uh, small ones, absolutely, but it could also be breaking ones. So uh, plan your migrations accordingly. Next one up uh, is the finish setting up your tools from the issue view. We talked about this one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I don't know why they are pushing it again, um, because it's not new. We already had it. So it is, uh, when you look at an issue, uh, then it will actually show these uh, recommendations that you have uh, started a, a setup for uh, different tools, like code tools, deployment tools, and security tools, but you haven't finished setting them up. Uh, so then you will have in the sidebar, it will be a notification to say that you should complete this one. So this one is not new. I don't know why this one is added here, actually. Next up then is adding links to your design files. And this one was announced a while ago. And this one, uh, we actually have a video for also. So this is where you can have, 
You can link the designs for Figma, which is the only one it's supported at the moment, and you will track their updates live uh, within the issue. Uh, so this is really, really good for everyone that works with Figma. Uh, so what they have also done then is added a design icon uh, to the card view to make it easy to find issues with design links. So what this one will do then is in the card itself, at the bottom of it, you will have a little geo icon that will tell you that you will actually have uh, a link then uh, or a connection to Figma uh, for Geo. And if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we also talked about the vis that we now can also have the same visualization when we have uh, a link. Uh, so you have an external link and uh, this one will also show there. So that can be a little bit confusing. So I haven't tried this one yet, but if you get two icons and both of them are the Jira icon, that um, I hope uh, they're already saying this one, Jira software for now. So I'm guessing this is temporary until they have made an agreement with Figma uh, to use a proper icon there. But this one is really, really nice. So you, what you need to do then is you need to install the Figma for your app, uh, which is a free app that you have in the marketplace. And when you have done that one and connected Figma to it, then from the issue view, you can then select add design. Um, so, uh, so you can actually paste the Figma URL and then click link. And in this one also, you will see if the design has been updated since you linked it, that one will also show there. So you don't have to worry to, that you're working with uh, old designs or that people are continuing to edit it after you've actually linked it which is very important if you're using here as a kind of repository for requirements, which I don't recommend that you do um, because, well, Jira is a task tracking tool. It's not a documentation tool and requirements and design are documentation. So, but if you want to use it, then this one exists and it's a very nice way to connect them to a Jira ticket. Next up, import your data into Jira as issues. Uh, so this one is, let's see, this is the new CSV importer. So it's, it's an update of the, the normal CSV import. So what you can do then is you can import it from uh, tools like Asana, ClickUp and GitHub. And this one we talked also about uh, a few weeks ago. And because this one is only working when you create a new project. So rather than importing data into an existing project, you have to do this while you are creating a new project. So this one is good to, to know that it's not the normal CSV import that you can do into an existing product. This one is an external one, basically, that you have only for when you create a product. You can still create this one for a blank project and then move every ticket that is created in there to an existing product if you want. Um, but just so you're aware, if you try to import it from one of these uh, additional tools here or the extra tools, Asana, ClickUp, and GitHub, then it's only going to work in a new project. Moving on, we have create a Confluence page while viewing a Jira issue. So uh, you can now create Confluence pages uh, while you are viewing a Jira issue. And this is, of course, only if you are licensed in both tools. So you have a license to actually create and conference pages and that you have the ability then to view a Jira ticket or your issue. So what you can do then is create access the create menu drop down uh, either below the issues title, so right below the, the uh, summary of it, or in the confluence content section that you usually have on the right sidebar. And when you create it, it will automatically be linked, kind of what you what happens when you create a linked ticket uh, or a linked issue. So they will know when you try to do that one that they should be dynamically connected on both sides. So the only thing that you need to do then is you need to uh, add a Confluence space to your Jira project uh, so that they are connected. And then this functionality will be available for you. And this is great if you want to create, for example, frequently asked questioned pages uh, that you use in the portal, uh, for example, when you get new issues. And you see that we have multiple questions of this one right away, uh, or it is part of an ongoing problem, or you have a major outage, for example, that will take a while to actually fix, and you can create a page on the fly while you're working with the incident or with the problem. So people will get notified in the portal and try to create new tickets. 
it can also be when you see that we need a new process for something, uh, or it can be that you can create new requirements or technical solutions uh, based directly on the content of the issue that you're working with. So this is a really, really good feature. This one is also, uh, it's a lot of repeated uh, things this week. So sidebar response to small windows and higher zoom views. And this one we had several weeks ago. Uh, so what this one is then is that they have made it so that if you have a very small window, if you have not a full screen size, for example, on your, on your browser, uh, or if you are on a mobile, it will actually uh, behave a little bit differently. So the sidebar now change sizes to keep all the controls in view. And uh, so the sidebar is unchanged uh, if you have larger than 768 pixels, which most browsers, uh, when you are on a desktop or a laptop, uh, very few people have these small windows. But if you have it like uh, like an open window, but you have it, don't have it in full size, you just have it like a small little section on your screen, then this one could be triggered if it's below 768 pixels. And also if you have zoomed in more than 200%, then you will see this behavior also. Uh, so you will notice then having your cursor over the sidebar, it no longer expands and you actually have to click it, uh, which is, I actually wish they had that one by default for all sizes because I hate this thing flying out uh, every time I accidentally move my cursor over it. Um, but this is now the behavior for uh, highly zoomed in or if you have very small browser windows. So you need to click on the, the uh, larger than icon then uh, on the side. So this one is not new. Uh, this one was announced quite a long time ago, but maybe they thought that people needed to know about it again. Search is getting more love. We already had last week, we had several features that, or several additions and that were added to the search. And what they have added now then is that if you want to refine your search, then you have the more plus uh, functionality where you can find more fields and you can narrow it down even further. So what they have done now is that they have rolled out uh, support then for description environment, epic name, Atlas goal, Atlas project, time and status short, and custom fields of the type paragraph, short text, and read only. So uh, many more things to, to actually break down or refine your search on, and this one is excellent, it's very good. We move on to the software, and uh, we have now uh, this one I think we have had before also, but maybe that one was, maybe my memory slipped there. I think we have had this one before also. But what they have done now for company managed projects is they have uh, simplified a little bit how you can create, edit and delete columns. So instead of you having to go in and configure the board, you can now do it directly then into the board itself. So you can create the column and you can rename column, you can move column and you can set constraints. And uh, so, for example, if you want to have whip limit, you can set that one. And you can also delete the column. Uh, and this one works with right click or hover on the uh, more actions. And then you can create select, uh, create, uh, sorry, then you can select the functionality that you want, set column width, uh, set column limit, and delete. So I haven't tried this one and uh, I couldn't see it either on my test instance this morning. And uh, so um, I have to check to see how this one works. But it's, it's nice. It comes uh, closer than to the, the user where we actually work. So we don't have to go into edit mode. Uh, it doesn't say actually who can do it. I'm assuming it will still just be the people that have the admin um, permissions then in the board itself. Uh, so uh, we'll see how this one works. And also right now you have to take uh, specific actions for it. So that is good. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about this one though, because you can accidentally drag a column uh, if you are not being very careful and that can screw things up quite bad for the team that works there. So maybe it needs to have, um, for these two at least, uh, maybe you need to have some kind of um, like a prompt saying, are you sure you want to make this change? 
but I guess that will be apparent when we start using this one, so we can see exactly how how it behaves and how troublesome it can be that you do this by accident. Next up is custom name for story points. If you are working with story points, and this is for plans, so if you want, you can now rename story points to something else, like T-shirt, or if you want to call it something else. Uh, and this one will now show up in plans with the new name. So I guess this is good if you are using story points. I think everyone by now know that I don't like story points. I think they are pointless, pun intended. But for those of you who love it, uh, you can now use this functionality. This one we have also talked about before, and so this is critical vulnerabilities, and I still don't know what the critical vulnerability is, um, but I guess someone uh, somewhere knows what it is. Um, but if you are then in your Jira board, uh, you can click on your avatar, and you will have the work suggestions show up. And if there, are, if there is a critical vulnerability suggestion, then you can select that card uh, to view more information. I have absolutely no idea how this one works, and I have never seen this one work either. Uh, so if anyone knows what the critical vulnerability is, and what's it related to, if it is, and how it's detected, then please let me know in the comments. I love to learn uh, more about how these things work. The next one is the same as we had above. So this one is, again, a reminder then to, uh, to set up your development tools from the issue view. So you will have then the setup tools uh, uh, prompt here to say that it has been uh, installed but not configured, and then you will get reminded of it. So it's the same thing that we had before. And this one is for your board, for the quick filters that we all love and use. This is now a refreshed experience, uh, and I wish that they would add images here so we could actually see what the, what the, what the refreshed experience is. Uh, it says that it is more accessible, and we approved the overall UX to make filtering snappier and simpler, uh, which is not saying anything. Uh, but uh, I guess we'll have to see. I don't know even if it is on the front end uh, when in the board view that we will have this one or if it is uh, at the back end where we actually configure it. But they are defining or describing here to how to create a quick filter. Uh, so I guess we have to see. I'm guessing this one is in line with the other changes that they made for, uh, for example, the card colors and stuff like that, that also had not that many changes in the UI itself, uh, but they had, instead of having a dedicated page, they have a model popping up. So maybe that is uh, what they're having. Um, as soon as I figure out what this one is, I'll, I'll try to show you what this one means. This one is also not new. This one has been before. It is the same thing that we had for the uh, when you had a critical uh, vulnerability. This one is instead that you have work suggestions. So it's the same thing. Go to your Jira board and find the button next to your avatar, which I still haven't been able to find. And you'll notice a blue bubble if you have work suggestions available. Uh, and I have no idea yet how this one is calculated and what it's based on. How does it know what kind of work is relevant for me if I'm the designer, for example, or if I'm a tester or developer or whatever role I have? Um, but I guess it can be useful in some scenarios, depending on how well trained it is. And if you see that little blue bubble, then you can click on the button to open the work suggestion and see uh, the added task there. And this one is also uh, not new. This one uh, we had also a couple of weeks ago. So when you create a new project, uh, while you are creating the project, you can also connect the different tools. And uh, so depending on what project type it is, I guess it will then connect your tools. So you can connect then Bitbucket, GitHub, Confluence, Snick, Yayfrog, Mend, Lacework, and Stackhawk, all the things that are now basically in your, in your um, uh, program stack. Uh, so rather than having it after you're created, you can now do it uh, while you're creating the product. I personally prefer to do it afterwards because not every project will have it and it will actually prolong uh, the time it takes to create the project. And so I prefer to have this as a two-step process, uh, but for everyone that prefer to have it in one, 
you now have it when you are creating the, the new products. We jump over now then to your service desk or your service management. And so now they have made it easier to set up Slack in Microsoft Teams for incident management. So uh, when you connect your Slack works at the Microsoft tenant with your service management and to use for collaborating on incidents. And for those of you who don't know what, what that one looks like, you will have it basically on the sidebar. So you can create a Slack channel or a Teams uh, chat based on an incident, for example. So you can create a customized or a focused uh, Slack channel or a Teams chat for it. And what they have done then is instead of manually turning on the chat tool for every service project, uh, this one is now uh, activated by default. So you only do it once globally and then everyone can use that one. Uh, so they realized it's not intuitive and productive for our admins. Yeah, it added a ton of extra work for us. Uh, so uh, now you instead have the opt out option. So you can just remove those uh, from your incident view in your in your request type if you don't want to use them. But they are uh, once the, the Slack and workspace and Microsoft tenant has been turned on, it's turned on for all service product. So that is either good if you uh, if you have everyone wanting to have these or it can be bad if not everyone want to have it because regardless of which route you take uh, it will add a lot of work for us admins so it's it's neither good nor bad um, but it is uh, at least they they think that more people would want to have it than not have it And then use your existing Slack channel to collaborate on incidents. So we already have this one. Uh, so previously, they, your service manager helped your incident responders immediately create a new Slack channel to collaborate on an incident, which is basically connected to this one. And now you can even add an existing Slack channel. So rather than it will always create a new one, and uh, now you can actually connect it to something that already exists. So it could be good, for example, if you have uh, many team members and someone have already opened an incident channel for it in Slack, for example. And so rather than creating a new one and having to parallel conversation, then you can connect it to the same that already exists. And then everyone can join the same conversation. So this is really, really good. And the way you do it then is you go to your incident and you select the add channel in the Slack field in details, assuming that you have it then, of course, uh, in your request type. And then you can create new or select existing channel. Uh, so it's different then from just creating a new channel. And then you can select existing channel. And from that one, then you can select your workspace and the channel and then select add. And then you will have connected this ticket then to that designated Slack channel. So this is really, really good also. Updated read-only version of workflow, workflows, sorry. Uh, so this one is, uh, they have updated now the read-only version of the workflow page in the product settings. So it's a refresh of the UI. Uh, so it, the page looks more modern. Well, that depends on your definition of modern, of course, but it, it has a new look at least. And it has a lot faster load time, which everyone loves. And also, uh, this one is made more from an architectural perspective, so they can make even more changes in the future. So this one is uh, a preparation then for more functionality that they want to have. So this one is interesting because I look forward to see what they will do with the view, uh, the read-only version of the workflow. But uh, yeah, I think this one looks, looks interesting. I haven't seen it yet, but I assume that it will look really good. And I also like the fact that they are thinking long term uh, of preparing them for making more changes in the future. And they also want to make sure that we note that we have also removed the text preview functionality. So that one does not exist anymore. So if you love that one, you will be sad. If you don't care about it, then you don't care. You just enjoy the new view. And this one, I think we have talked about before also. So create request types using Atlas and Intelligence. So rather than you uh, actually knowing what you want to add, you can ask the AI to make suggestions for you. 
And like I said in, I think this one, three or four weeks ago, this one came out. Uh, this one can be good if you are, for example, moving into an area you don't really know what kind of request that makes sense for that uh, part of the world or that part of work. Uh, or if you're a little bit lazy and you just say, just tell me what I need to add. Um, but other than that, I think most of us know what kind of request types we need uh, or make sense uh, if we are experienced with that in that field of work. But now you can ask the AI to suggest things for you, and it will do that based on uh, a template, or uh, you can use the AI uh, just to question it. So it's a good change, and it's even though I don't think it's going to be used that much, it's good for new and inexperienced people uh, when they need to have some, some extra guidance for it. Add anyone as a stakeholder, no agent license needed. Yes, this one has been there for a while. The stakeholder role has been there. And uh, now you can add stakeholders uh, that are not part of the agent group or even have a license for it. Uh, so they can now be informed. And this is really, really good when you have incidents and you want to have uh, a number of stakeholders just to be informed and say, you know, we now have a major incident or we have an important incident or problem even that has turned into an incident that we want you to be aware of so really really good uh, so the way you do it is you use the stakeholder uh, functionality in there and you add users to that stakeholder and this way you can now update them with uh, add comment for stakeholders so then you can communicate directly to them and you can assign users to a stakeholder product role uh, if you go to the Atlassian administration directory. And so that is also a really good thing. And you can invite new users or existing ones as stakeholders. Uh, so this is a really, really good change. Let's move on to usage, track, usage tracking for features. Have you ever wondered how many objects you have in assets? How many schemas? No, not before. Uh, now, though, I'm very uh, cautious about it. Now I really want to keep track of that one since we have hard limitations that would actually disable functionalities if we break the limitations. So, yes, now I really need to know. And we have this now from top right of your screen. Uh, so settings, products, and you go to your service management and select featured usage. And then in the Assets tab, you can now see the number of object schemas and schemas. And you can also go to Virtual Agent for the number of assisted conversation and conversation. So this is not really related to assets, but this one is related then to uh, the conversational ticketing when you connect then to uh, Slack or to Teams. And this one is also not new. This one we have reported on before. Uh, so I think uh, in that one, we even showed what this one looked like. But uh, yes, these, one, these things are becoming increasingly important now with the limitations that are being added. Let's see, new project details page for company managed service projects. I think this one also is not new because we talked about this one several weeks ago as well. Uh, so they have a new sleek lookout of team managed project details. Okay, so the last one I think was for customer managed project details. So I'm guessing this one is now the same changes that they did for that, but now for team managed projects. So you can also enjoy more formatting options for the project description, which is good. I'm assuming this one is means that they have added the editor there like they have for company managed. So this is really, really good too. Jira work management, contextually create issues. Um, I think this one is, I don't know if this one is new or we have talked about this one before as well. Uh, so what they have done then is they have made some improvements on how you can create issues in context of the view you're in. So if you're in the board, if you're in the list, the calendar and timeline views, all have been improved so you can create issues more easily. So in the list and the board views, now you can create a new issue between two issues by hovering at your cursor, and then this little plus icon will appear. And then you can just enter your issue and press enter. And then same, same thing for timeline, and then you can create a child issue when you hover your cursor over the issue and select the plus icon. 
So this is good. Now we can uh, more easily create where we are working. So again, they are moving closer to where we actually work. Uh, and this is a good thing. Confluence, uh, let's see, Confluence Premium, content managing the sidebar navigation. I made a video about this one uh, just a few days ago, and it should be, let's see, where are we? Up there now, as uh, so you can see it. So what they have done now is they have returned the content manager. So you will have it now in the sidebar navigation. And uh, so the content manager that was previously called for bulk ar archive is now back. And from that um, sidebar, uh, you can now click on it and you can work then with bulk archiving and bulk deleting items. And they have other things coming and they are hinting about new things that can, can come there also. So uh, yes, this is a really good change. And uh, for anyone who bulk manages different pages, this is really good. Catch up quickly with page comment summary. Uh, so now they have added in the Atlassian intelligence. Uh, so uh, before we have been able to summarize uh, geo tickets, for example, all the comments, and then can just summarize what have you talked about, which is an amazing functionality. And now they have the same thing in Confluence. So if you have a Confluence page with the many comments on, or when it gets a little bit muddy, you, re you need a quick summarization of what has happened. Then you can then click on the little icon there and then you can then select summarize comments and it will read through the comments and the AI will then summarize it for you. And this is also really, really good. Let's see, catch up, no, sorry. Uh, configure and display labeled content with clarity and ease. So now you can find and customize the filter by label a macro. Uh, so before it was called content by label, so it's one of the macros. So it's one more macro now that they are updating. So they have done the same as they've done for the other macros. So uh, they have improved the name to filter by label and they changed the icon. So now it's a new icon uh, for this macro. And then you will also have a simpler filtering experience uh, with a more clearly organized drop down menu. So it's easier to configure it and an overall and clearer, better organized set of options in the configuration model. Uh, so it's a little bit of an overhaul of the content by label that is now filter by label. So this one we will make a video for, or I will make a video for and show you what that one looks like. And we continue with another one then, customize and display recent updated content. Uh, so this one is the macro that used to be called recently updated. Uh, so now it is uh, shortened a little bit. Uh, so it's now called recent updates. And it, they have done the same then. So they have improved the name and new icon for it. And you now have basic and display config tabs and it will now be a little bit uh, in product guidance for it. So it will be easier to, to work with. So I'll make a video for this one as well. So you can see what that one looks like. And next up is for Confluence Standard, Nested Actions. Uh, so this one used to be a, a premium only functionality that is now um, been added for all paid plans. So Standard will also get this one. This is really good. And so more functionality for everything that is paid. I like that a lot. And so what this one does then is it allows you to do nested actions. So in this case, it's, uh, it talks about uh, archiving or delete the entire branch of the content tree at once. Um, so this one can be done then up to 500 nested pages and or whiteboards. It does not say for uh, if you can do this also with databases. Uh, so this one could be interesting to, to know if, it's, if that one behaves differently. But other than that, uh, whiteboards and nested pages seems to be considered to be the same type. And so you can archive them up to 500 uh, or up to 100 then can be deleted together. Uh, so if you have then uh, a category called, let's call it to be deleted, and then you have several subcategories below it, then it can then delete the entire tree. So everything from parent-child relation down to the last one. And uh, so this one is also very, very good.
And the way you do that then is you find the parent item in the tree, uh, so any, any category in the tree that you want. And then you can click the more action and then you will have the option then to archive or to delete. And then everything below that category will be uh, archived or deleted. So this one is also really, really good. And they are also talking about um, more content nesting enhancement. We talked about this one last week and the week before. So they have added more functionality than that we can nest macros inside of each other. Uh, so now they have then uh, made more uh, background changes. I assume that this one will be then. So they have made the groundwork for future content organization improvements in cloud. And uh, so right now, then this introduces the ability to let nest lists within quotes. So within a quote, you can now have multiple lists and you can even have a nested list. Uh, so this one is, um, like I said in the past, uh, these are great changes. The more we can mix and match things uh, in Confluence, the better it is. And excerpts, this one we made a video for not long ago. Uh, so you can now add excerpts to any page with greater clarity and ease. And uh, so you can now finally use the insert excerpt macro. And uh, so they have now remade this one and renamed it and refreshed it. And uh, so it used to be called excerpt include, and now it has the name insert excerpt. So uh, they have now the new name for it and a new icon. So it's easier to find, hopefully. You have a bit of search and select experience, and you will also have the inclusion of your accepts name and source page is uh, visible within its frame. And I'm pretty sure we've had this one before. Uh, so I think I even show this one in the video uh, for that one. And so I think that one will be up there somewhere. Yeah, there it should be. Guests can receive and manage email notification. Uh, okay, so with email notification, guests can now get closer to the work happening in Confluence. So stay in the know and respond more quickly to, mat to, to, mat to matters that need their attention, okay? So they can fine tune their email preferences to make sure they only get notified about what most matters to them. And I have no idea how is a guest gonna do this and where is that information gonna stay? Uh, I'm not really sure how this one works. If it is just for the invited guests or any guests, or it seems odd. And it needs a bit of clarification, I think, because a guest that does not register have no account and they cannot store anything unless you present some kind of view where you set cookies or sessions, uh, session data on their computer. And uh, so I don't know. Someone needs to clarify this one for me because uh, I'm not really sure what this one means. Default data classification levels get migrated. This one we have also had. So if you migrate to another uh, instance, then it will actually preserve the related rules. And this one is uh, for uh, creating, storing, managing, moving or deleting page and blog data in each space. And I think this one is, yeah, this is only related to the, the beta testing for the uh, security, uh, the classic information security that is being tested for how we provide access to apps. Uh, so this one we have talked about before. Uh, so this is just an addition, uh, another addition to this one. And this one we've also talked about, submit feedback to the whiteboard that you can have it in multiple places. And um, this one uh, is probably a little bit more relevant now that white, uh, Atlassian or Confluence whiteboards are officially released. But what it means is that you will have multiple ways to provide feedback to Atlassian. Customize and display the child page macro. So this is for child page macro. And I think we have talked about this one before also. And it feels like they have made some mistake with this update because a lot of things here has already been um, presented in previous uh, release notes or cloud changes. And so this one is also a refresh of the child children display macro that is now called child pages macro. And this one we have already talked about. So it's the same thing. They have refreshed the icon and changed the name, updated the, uh, the way it uh, presented. And that's basically it. 
space permission get look and feel improvements absolutely we have already discussed this one uh, several weeks ago and it's awesome uh, so if you haven't seen it before then um, probably have a video for it somewhere uh, or just go back and check the the old uh, release notes or the confluence uh, change logs so because this one has absolutely been shown before and it's amazing Better content management uh, for Confluence Premium. Uh, so let's see, this the area formerly known as Bulk Archive have now been updated and moved under Space Setting, Manage Content. And this one we talked about higher up. So this was the previous one where you have the, uh, the, manage, uh, the content manager. So this one is, I don't know if this one is new or not, but uh, it's the same functionality. So. And you have the inactive pages button filters on that page, so you can filter on inactive as well. And you can archive 500 at once, and 100 can be deleted at once. I don't know why this one is duplicated, because it's exactly the one we talked about uh, earlier. Anyway, it's, it's there, and it's nice. And this one is also duplicated. This one makes sense though, because the we, we this one we first talked about uh, from the year perspective that you can do that. And this one is now from the confluence perspective. So it's the same thing that we talked about earlier that you can create a confluence page now when you are viewing the Jira issue. Moving on. Sorry, this one. Next up is then better filters for admins managing guest access. And I'm not really sure what this one is. It says that admins now have better filtering experience to help them manage guests access to their site. So first they made it easier to find and assign space access to guests that have no space assigned. Just select the guests with no access filter next to the search field. And I'm not really sure, it doesn't say where is this one. Uh, so is this directly in the space or is it in the admin section? I wish they would be a little bit better with explaining these ones. But uh, down here it says to add a group to the filter here, then we have, no, it is not even in here, it says, where are we? So uh, somehow they have added more functionality than to filter out which guests do not have access to a space. Um, and if they don't have a space assigned, they cannot access the conference at all. It makes sense. They are guests. I uh, don't know why we needed that information, but if we have also added guests from a group filter, um, the filter guest list by member of a specific guest group. I don't know what this one means. Why would you create a group for guests? Uh, but I guess this one is good if we have people that create local groups for whatever reasons and put them in use for guests, I guess. So here you have, let's say you have a guest group in Atlassian administration called Acme Contractors. Okay, there we are now in Atlassian administration. Then you can add Acme Contractors to the guest from a group filter. Uh, is this in the, in the, I, I don't understand where this one is actually. Guest from a group filter. What filter? Where where is this filter? And I wish they would be more clear with this one. So this one I'm very confused about. So uh, I have actually no idea what this one is. Is it a filter in the admin section? And who is it for? Is it a filter for a specific user? If anyone knows what this one is, uh, or where this one is located, please let me know uh, because uh, I'm I'm stumped on this one. It doesn't. This is kind of like when you are asking people to submit an incident and they don't tell you where you start. So if I don't know where you are, the rest of the instruction means nothing uh, because I cannot I cannot begin to process what is happening here without you telling me where this one is. So is this one for the administrators in the admin section? Uh, in conference? Is it in the admin section in the uh, admin.atlassian.com or is it admins in the space itself? Give me some kind of guidance uh, because this one makes no sense to me whatsoever. Let's move on to the next one. 
So next up is open beta surface your asset objects in Confluence. And this one is also not new. This is the asset macro that was announced quite a while ago. And uh, so what it means that it is possible now to take your assets and you can now present them in Confluence using this macro. And I actually think that it is not even in open beta anymore. I think it's actually released. Uh, so this one is really, really good, but it is absolutely not new. So the way it works is the same way as you have for your uh, your issues. So in the macro, you will actually, uh, like we have it done here. So you, you use the slash command and you uh, search for assets beta, uh, and then you insert objects from, and then you can choose an object schema and uh, from your asset. And then you can also have an AQL query to limit, to reduce it to exactly the, the items you want to show. And then you just insert that one into the Confluence page. So not new, uh, but certainly a favorite one of mine. I just wish we could change it a little bit. Uh, I would love to have the possibility that you had before uh, in data centers, you can just show one individual item that it looks then like uh, more like a button or a pill. And um, because that one we can use in, in other ways and, and more useful inline also if you want to reference uh, a single object, that would be amazing. We have the same thing here now then, this is the same of course that we had before. So cyber response or small or higher zoom views. So if you have a window narrower than 768 pixels or zoomed in more than 200%, and then it will behave differently. So then it will uh, will behave the same way as, as we presented before. Automatically getting a personal space. This is absolutely not new. This has been for, for quite a while. And we actually had, I just noticed saw an article yesterday on how you can actually revert this one. Since uh, getting a, everyone getting a personal space is not always a good thing. It's wasteful in terms of space. And there is also the problematic thing when someone is leaving the company, then they have actually spaces left behind. And uh, so uh, this one is absolutely not new. Uh, but um, the way you, you can do it is, or the way it's set up is that every new customer, or every new user. Um, so the way it's set up is that every new user with a with conference license get a, a personal space automatically. And that one has been around for quite a while. So moving on to Bitbucket, and here again, they are introducing uh, size limits. Uh, so this one is now for uh, for 100 megabyte file size limit in Bitbucket. Uh, so while that one is still fairly large, it is, it is a symptom of an underlying problem with cloud that it's not scalable. Uh, because if it were, they would not have limitations. They would have guidelines for it. Uh, so this one is a limit. So um, yeah, it's concerning that this one happens. And if you're using Bitbucket, just then be aware that this is a 100 megabyte size limit. And I'm guessing if we go to the community post here, so let's see what they are saying. This one is will roll out on May 6th even. Uh, so less than a month. Uh, no, sorry, not less than a month. Uh, it is March now. Uh, so it will be uh, April and before May. So a month and a half basically before this one rolls out. And it says, uh, what if I do happen uh, to run into this one? Then any files that are over 100 megabyte, and they can be converted to an LFS to track them outside of the core repository. And that does not seem like the best way. Uh, or you can actually push the size limit to be disabled by repository admin. So you can actually go beyond that. And, and this one only applies to pushes. So if you already have files larger than this, then you're safe. Um, but um, yeah, like you see the comments here, uh, it's not... It's not received well. Uh, anytime you implement limitations, people are gonna get angry about it. And like I said, this this is more of a symptom of uh, I'm not I don't want to say failed architecture, but it is it is um, 
how should we put it? It is a sign of an uh, infrastructure that it hasn't been uh, built for scale, I think. Uh, so I think this one, uh, it, it enforces that feeling that we, we're seeing more and more limitation because uh, as we push more users into uh, the Atlassian platform, the performance goes down, uh, so we can no longer perform uh, the same tasks at the same availability and the same uh, performance unless we limit the requests and we limit the sizes. So um, it's sad to see that we are going this direction. And this one has been for all 2024. I think we're seeing this one uh, more and more limitation on the, the infrastructure. So we'll talk about that one in a bigger video later on, uh, but not uh, today. Today, we're just going to go back here and see that there is a limitation for Bitbucket for 100 megabytes. And that should be the last one. Yes. Uh, so that was all that we had for this video. And I don't know what happened to this one because they have marked a lot of old things that we have already talked about as new in this one. Uh, so I think it is a mislabeling that these should actually be marked as rolled out. Um, and we also see continues that now we have both assets being reduced or limited by 100 object schemas. And Bitbucket is now reduced to 100 megabyte files. But that was all I had for this video. So until next time, I hope you will have an awesome day and a great week.